So in this video, we're going to extend our manipulation of images that we saw in the previous video, and we're going to actually animate our little rocket image so that it comes down through a frame like it's landing on a planet. And this is, again, all taken from the prologue of the second edition of How to Design Programs. So the first thing we have to do is we have to, once again, require the image library uh, that we saw earlier, and that allows us to manipulate these little images. And then we also have to create an empty scene. Empty scene is a function that comes with the image library, and it basically gives us a little frame that our picture, or in this case our movie, can live in. So we're going to come over here and say empty scene 100, 100. And now if I run that, I get indeed a little empty frame there, which is cool. And now we can place an image in that by using the place image function. So I'm actually going to just copy this whole piece and come over here and paste that in. Paste. Uh, oh, it didn't pick up the rocket. So we're going to have to insert the rocket uh, just like we did before. Uh, rocket s jpeg so now we have place image that image at position 50 zero in this scene at this point I now don't believe that so make that go away now if we run this we get our little rocket up at the top of the frame um, and if you remember from reading the book the coordinates here the x coordinate 50 means that we're going to be halfway across the 100 pixel uh, scene, and the zero means we're going to be up at the very top because the y coordinates run from zero at the top down to 100 at the bottom. So they're sort of the inverse, y coordinates are the inverse of what we might be used to for most math classes. And so we can repeat this. So I'm actually going to copy and paste so I don't have to. Copy, retype this, paste, paste, paste. Let's clean up my returns. And we'll just place the image at successively uh, lower points. Remember that bigger numbers move us down in the frame. And now if we run that, we get a sequence of images that are indeed having the rocket come down in the frame. So we're getting scenes, if we saw those together bup, 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 in the same place, we would get what looks like an animation of the rocket going down if we start with this image and move our way down. And so that's really cool. Okay, A really crucial observation here is notice that I got these four lines by copying and pasting. If you find yourself copying and pasting code, that is almost always a bad sign because you're duplicating logic. And one of the cardinal rules in computer science is you don't want to duplicate logic if you can help it. There's even an acronym for this, DRY, DRY, stands for don't repeat yourself. And so if you read things about software development online, people will often talk about the dry principle. And we are violating the dry principle here. We have repeated ourselves three, four times. We've repeated the image and the empty scene part. Um, and what's changed, we've even repeated the 50. And all that's changed in these four lines is the number here. And so one of the primary tools we have in Racket for drying up our code, eliminating this kind of duplication, is functions. Functions allow us to avoid this kind of duplication. So we are going to use a function to capture what's the same in each of these four cases, but use an argument to the function to capture what's different. So a common technique is to look at what's the same and look at what's different and take the bit that changes and make it an argument 
and have the rest all just be the body of the function. So we'll say define create oops can't spell rocket scene and what changes here is the height. It's zero, then it's ten, then it's twenty, then it's thirty. So that's a reasonable name for our argument. We'll say that our function create rocket scene takes a single argument height, which tells us how high up we want it to be, and the body of that function is basically going to be one of these guys. So I'm going to say copy and paste. But I don't want it to always be at height zero. I want it to be at the specified height. So I'm going to change the zero to height. And now this function gives us this expression with height being the parameter that was given to the function. If we call create rocket scene with zero, we'll get this instance. If we call it with 10, we'll get this instance. The 10 will go here. We call it with 20, we'll get this instance. We call it with 30, we'll get this instance. And so we'll be able to use create rocket scene to replace all of these with create rocket scene 0, create rocket scene 10, create rocket scene 20, create rocket scene 30. So if we get rid of these guys, boom, and run. Hey, we got our images again. But now we have much cleaner code because we haven't repeated all of this over and over again. We simply call create rocket scene four times. And so that gets us nearly to an animation. And one way that we can see that we would like to do a little more cleaning is that this actually looks pretty repetitive too. I was pretty tempted to copy paste and then just change the numbers because typing all of this four times is kind of a nuisance. Well, it turns out there is an animate function in another library called universe. So we'll acquire 2HTDP slash universe that gives us an animate function. And animate takes a single function as an argument and calls this function over and over again with different values that are connected to the timer that's running inside of animate and it can be used to create animations. So if we so we'll get rid of these guys and run. Look at that. The rocket dropped right through the bottom of the world and disappeared because the animator is still running and it's moving the rocket farther and farther down and so the rocket since it's not visible in the window it's still moving but it's uh, outside the frame that we can see so if I quit that one way that we can see that it's still running behind the scenes is to make a bigger scene so if we make this say 300 by 300 and run it we'll see now we have a bigger scene a bigger frame and the rocket just keeps going doo, 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 right through the bottom of the world. Awesome. And so animate takes a function and calls that function over and over again with different numbers that are basically the, the time units. Um, and so it calls it with zero at the beginning and then it calls it with you know, five and 10 and 20. And so, we've seen a couple of important things in this video. One, we've seen how to use functions as ways of drying up our code, removing duplication. Um, and that's going to be really, really important. Probably one of the most important uh, concepts in the entire course. And we've seen that we can make cool little movies. I mean, it's nothing really exciting, but uh, it's something we didn't know how to do yesterday. So it's pretty neat that we can make these little movies. And obviously, that was only with a few minutes work and a few lines of code. With some effort, we could make fairly interesting movies. And that's pretty slick. So I'm going to save my code. Save. Uh, simple rocket anim animation dot rkt. Remember, dot rkt for the extension on our files. Save. And that wraps it up. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.